from part two from yesterday. Uh, the Lord put it on my heart to continue. And if you can get me, Alicia, bring me a hammer, please. Really important to have her. I was going to get her earlier and I forgot. There is a scripture that God talks about. And this scripture, I looked at the scripture and it's in Colossians chapter two. And I'll have you read it when you get home. But remember Colossians chapter two. Because I'm going to show you a picture about Colossians chapter two. And it's so important if you get this picture, because I put up, sometimes I put some uh, PowerPoints and I make a visual so you can see what God is saying, amen? And then you can get the hammer and nail it to the cross, like God said. <laughs> you see, when we look at the cross, it speaks, of, it speaks of forgiveness. It speaks of death, amen? It speaks of, it speaks of how much God loves us, that uh, he gave us an access back to eternity with him putting us back in our position in the garden of Eden, walk, get it, in the garden of Eden, walking in the cool of the day with the Lord, having a relationship with God. And so we know that he is our father, our king, our God, the lover of our soul and our friend. Amen. The great judge with a gavel in his hand, bringing justice and judgment and his timing is the right timing. I used to tell God, hurry up. You take so long. I got that out of my language real quick. <laughs> I don't know, I bet you you said that, I'm not the only one, praise the Lord. Like, oh, you take so long. But you know, I had to learn that his timing is the perfect timing. I had to learn that. That's something you've got to learn, amen? Because we all, we live in a, in a microwave society. We want everything like yesterday, praise the Lord. But I want to share the hammer because, you know, Jeremiah, the prophet, and God uses the hammer. It's a tool. It's a weapon. It's a tool. It's an instrument to build, break. But God told Jeremiah, your word it, it, the Bible says that Jeremiah, he says, the Lord says, Your the word, my word is like a hammer that breaks in pieces. Can you imagine? The word of the Lord is like a hammer and it breaks in pieces. And then Judah Maccabee, if you know anything about Judah Maccabee, the defender of faith, when Jesus honored him in John 10, his name means hammer. And then we're going to look today at Colossians 2, because in the Bible, in Colossians 2, the Lord says to nail the handwritings. Okay, we go. Nail the handwritings and the ordinances that are written against you. He says, and nail them to the cross. He says, nail the handwritings and the ordinances that work against you and nail them to the cross. The handwriting, I had to tear it up, look it up, read it up, and I digested it. And it's so it's working against you. Their ordinances are, are commands. They're like, Things that are spoken. I don't know about you, but sometimes those emotions just, whoo, they just speak. Huh? And so we've got to get them, and the Bible says that we need to nail them to the cross. So it's something that we got to get the emotion and bam, nail it to the cross. So if you have to close your eyes with a hammer in your hand and get that emotion and nail that to the cross, what does the cross mean? Death. You've been crucified with Christ, right? So you gotta think about that. Right? When, you know what God says, speaks, and He gives us a word, He gives us direction, He gives us instruction. We gotta kind of like meditate in it and think about it and look at it and talk to the word and, and understand what God is saying. So that means that any command, any direct command that's working against what God says, I've gotta get that and nail it to the cross, okay? So it's something that we have to have action. See, faith without works is dead. God gives you faith, which is information. We've got to have action behind what God says. Amen? So we're going to look at that. So praise the Lord. I'm going to leave my little hammer here. But I wanted to introduce that little scripture there. And we will find it over here on... Thank you. Here we go. Blotting out the handwritings and the ordinances which work. What are they doing? Working a what? Against you, right? It's against your faith. It's against your health. It's against your peace. It's against the power of God. It's against, listen, hope. It's working against what God says. So he says here, blotting out the handwritings and ordinances that was, that was against us, which, which are contrary to us, and took it, it took it out of the way, what? Nailing it to the cross. Okay? So I, you see the little heart here? I want you to know, I want, you, I want to talk to you, to you about your heart today. The heart is the seat of the emotions. Everybody say, what's in my heart is going to talk. Yes, it does. It has, oh, it has a narrative. So our emotions, whatever sits in our heart, 
is going to become emotions, action, character, personality, attitude, and so on. You got, you got to get that. So, so it, when I teach the Word of God, you see what God says, right? That's what you're supposed to do. You're going to see what God is saying, and then you apply it to your temple. This is the temple of the living God. And Scripture says the temple, the Spirit of God lives in you. Amen? So praise the Lord. So we see here, what are you going to nail to the cross today? What are you going to die to? Okay, what are you going to kill inside of you? What emotions are going to die? Anger, hurt, disappointment, loneliness, whatever it is. Amen? You have to learn how to. See, I, I, when, when, when I say death, people go six feet under. I, that's a form of, if somebody's dead, they don't talk anymore. Is that correct? You may have a memory, but it shouldn't have a language because you can't talk. But I want you to know that there's a lot of things that are inside of God's people that are still talking. That should have been dead a long time ago. Okay? It should have been dead. And, and listen, it's up to us to what? Nail it to the cross. Amen? Amen? So praise the Lord. Let's go to the message. Praise Jesus. If I can find my way back. Can you put me way back to the top? I went backwards. And I want to talk today because many of you are coming into Valentine's Day. And that will be... Can somebody give me a Valentine's Day? Wednesday, Thursday, what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, February the 14th. The world, everybody say the world, come on. The world. the world celebrates Valentine's Day, and it's about uh, the world, it's about Cupid, it's about love, and that's all beautiful, don't get me wrong, because we are for love, because God is what? Love. love. Amen? And so we know that people celebrate uh, Valentine's Day, so they, they celebrate, uh, uh, you know, flowers, candies, and so on, and you express your love to one another, which is absolutely beautiful. But I want to talk today about the history of Valentine or Valentine's Day, or the history of what happened in the year 2000, no, 269 to 270 AD. This is historical, and we're going to see, uh, we're going to talk about the life, just like we talked about Judah Maccabee, where the Lord honored Judah Maccabee in John 10, uh, John 10, when God, uh, Jesus walked into the temple honoring the life of Judah Maccabee because he stood for righteousness. He defended the faith, amen, which is our job to defend the faith eventually. Praise the Lord when you heard. But we, I want to talk about, about the uh, Bishop Valentine. Valentine's, his, uh, Bishop Valentine, he was a bishop. And at that time, there was a lot of persecution with the Christian faith or Christ-like faith. I mean, know that Christian is Christ-like. Christian faith, there was a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, persecution at that time in history. And Bishop Valentine was teaching the word. He was a teacher and a preacher of the word of God. And at that time, Claudius was the king and the emperor in that time in history. I want to go back to history a bit be before I get into the prophetic word. So historically, he lived a life of preaching the gospel, bringing love and unity and the love of God to the world around him. And what happened was, is the Roman emperor said this, my soldiers are forbidden to marry, check it, it's history, are forbidden to marry, because if they get married, then when they're out fighting for my kingdom, Claudius the Great, or Claudius the Emperor, well, they're, they're going to be thinking about their wives, so they're forbidden to marry. But of course, Bishop Valentine, being a man of faith, right, and wanting to bring godly order, right? So not living in sin, because you know you gotta get married to, you know, have relations. And according to the word, it could be fornication if you're in sin and you're not married. So he said, I'm going to marry you, and he began to marry the Roman soldiers uh, be, so that they can live a life of, live a life right with God, not in sin, but they would be married and God would bless the marriage. So, uh, so, I, um, so of course, Bishop Valentine began to marry the Roman soldiers and, and teach the word of God. And Claudius, the emperor, found out. And what he did is he put him in prison. And I want you to know that on February the 14th, 269 A.D., Cla uh, Claudius, the emperor, had Saint Valentine. They made, they made him a saint after, but Val Bishop Valentine... They had him beheaded. They chopped off his head, just like they chopped off Paul the Apostle's head. How many know that Paul the Apostle was a martyr for Jesus Christ? 
Okay? And he knew he was going to leave because the Lord told him, because he said, I finished the race. He said, I, 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 and he, there's a beautiful scripture that Paul the Apostle talks that he's done already. He's done the race and he's uh, fulfilled the call. And the next day, of course, he was Paul the Apostle was beheaded. We know that the, the, the word of God and many of the, the apostles, they were martyred for standing up for God. You and I have not went to that extreme of love. And, and sacrifice for the Lord. But there is one thing that we can do living now is be a martyr for Jesus Christ. What does that mean? It's not only death, it's a life of self-denial. And we're gonna look at the definition of martyrism because today God is saying, will you be my Valentine? Will you be the Lord Jesus Valentine just like, just like, just like Bishop Valentine? He was doing the will of God standing up for righteousness, bringing Jesus to, to families and couples at that time in history. So now, Scripture says, as you can see, Jesus with a Valentine's balloon, thank you, Lord, knocking on the door of your heart. Here is Bishop Valentine marrying the couples, okay? Uh, we know that uh, that Scripture says in Psalms, uh, Proverbs 23, it says, my son, 23 verse 26, my son, give me your heart. So God desires your heart, okay? He desires your heart. What is your heart? The seat, it's a seat of your emotions, your heart. I'm not talking about the one that pumps blood, though our heart does pump blood, our physical heart from the world of matter. But we look at the scripture, and of course here it is, 2004, uh, February 14th, he was beheaded by the Roman Emperor Claudius, and at that time there was a great persecution, persecution of the church. But of course, we uh, have been taught in the world that Valentine's Day is about Cupid. Okay, I don't want to mess up your Valentine's. I want to educate you. Can I educate you in the Word of God? Thank you so much. Okay. You can still celebrate Valentine's and love each other. That's fine. But will you be the Lord's Valentine's? Or will you be? Today, you have to make, you're going to make a decision. I'm going to be your Valentine's one. Watch this. So we see, we know that in 1300... 1300, the year 1300, Cupid began, 1840, uh, Valentine's cards began, and $1 billion, $1 billion is spent, spent on cards, $35 million uh, candy, uh, spent on candy, $220 million on roses, amen? Great, it's moving the economy, we gotta move the economy, we gotta bring jobs in this world, I, I'm not against that. People got a job selling flowers, big money, praise God, but that's not what it's about. It is about God's love. It's about being a martyr for God. Okay, so let's look at the definition of mar martyrism or martyr. What does it mean to call someone a martyr? A martyr. It is a person who willingly suffers rather than to renounce his or her faith. It's a person who is put to death or endures great suffering on behalf of any belief, principle, or cause. It, a martyr is someone, is one who lives a life of self-denial for faith. This is you, living a life of self-denial for faith. In other words, you could be watching the football game, but you denied yourself. I'm not, that's not okay, but you're here, right? You put God first. It is when you serve God. It is when you stand by, stand, you stand in faith. You live a life of, de you're denying your own pleasures. You're denying your own things you can do on your time, okay? A, a, a martyr also means one who lives a life of denying yourself. Have you ever watched something so bad you say, I can't have that because God said, no, I'm going to deny myself what that pleasure, right? I'm going to deny that and I'm going to deny myself because I stand for faith. Okay, I'm going to get on the cross and I'm going to die to what I want. Martyrism, right? I'm going to die to what I think I deserve. I, that martyrism, a person that lives a life of self-denial and lives by faith and trusts God and loves God so much that you will be, like scripture says, pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. There it is. That, that's, that, that is a valid time in this generation. Amen? So as we see here, I want to talk today because today I want you to know that Valentine, Bishop Valentine, had to flatline. Does everybody know what flatline is? That means when your heart is not pumping. That, you know, you know the heart pumps blood, right? The blood, the blood flows through your body. But God wants you to have a heart 
even like we've been learning a heart like King David who had a heart of God. And I want you to know that today God is going to do heart surgery. Amen. He's got to do, do you understand that God's got to cut some things out of your heart. <laughs> and some of you be pumping too much, too much tension inside of you. Some of you, you, you got stuff pumping in you that, that's breathing in you. To see, when, you're, that, when your heart is pumping, <sighs> have you ever been thinking, who do you stand up? Who do you eat? What do you think's going on? You even start jerking like your heart. It affects your body. And God wants you to flatline. If we say flatline, come on. Let's all say today I'm flatlining. That's right. And I ain't going to res you, resurrect you either. I'm going to let you die. I'm going to let you die to all that stuff. Die to yourself. Die to all that desire. Die to the lies of the enemy. Die to what you think is good for you. Only God can give you what's good for you. Only God can satisfy those needs inside of you. Only God can give you peace and only God can give you his heart. I need your heart. I need you to have a heartbeat like Bishop Valentine's for Valentine's Day this day. This year, 2023. I need your heart to pump for God. See, when God's heart is beating inside of you, his blood is flowing through every part of your being. His blood flows. When God, when we allow God's heart to beat in us, his desire, his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness, that's a heartbeat for God to do the will of my Father. See, there is a will that God has, his desire for your life. He has a purpose for you. You're not an accident. There is a purpose. You are here on this earth, and you better get with the program and get rid of your heartbeat and let God's heart be inside of you. Amen? So we see here. So today's title of the message is Flatline. Today you're going to flatline. I mean, you're going to flatline. You're not going to let your heart beat anymore. You're going to welcome God's heart to beat in you. See, when his heart is beating in you, boom, oh, love. There's so much mercy, Father, compassion. I want your thoughts. I want your mind. I want, I want your character, God. I want your mercy and compassion that it can flow out of me. There is an atmosphere of God that you start walking in such authority and such power and there's such joy. See, that, that when you walk with the heartbeat of God, there is no unmet needs. You gotta get this. There is no unresolved issues. There, there, I'm telling you, there's not there. It, 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 you flatlined. You gotta flatline to everything. You hear something, like Jeremy was talking about, there were that and that and that. You know, words cannot affect you. We don't let words affect us that are of the world or that is of somebody soulish attack. You see, people don't know about the spirit. You are the light of this world, the Lord said. The spirit of God has to flow through you. And we gotta we have to understand we have to cooperate with the flow. See, God, we have a will to say yes or no. Yes, we do. And we have to say, yes, God, let it flow. Yes, God, let it flow. Yes, God, let it flow. Let the Lord flow in me. Yeah, now you got to flow with the Lord. And it's gracious. It's joyful. It's peaceful. Does your body get tired? Sure it does. We rest and we get up and we worship the Lord. And we say, Lord, let your heart be in me. I'm flatlining. Every time I open my eyes, Lord, I'm flatlining. My heart's not going to be your heart is going to beat in me. And just like Bishop's, uh, Bishop Valentine, as he got up every morning, I'm sure he got up to preach the word, to teach the word, and let me bring me some more soldiers. I'll marry them so they won't be in sin. Bring them down. Not even caring about the consequences. What? Do you not think that the Lord took them before the pain? Yeah, I believe he did. Just like Stephen when he was martyred. So I give you my spirit. Don't you think God is big enough to take them? He, you are a what? Spirit being. You have a what? Soul that lives in this body. The minute the spirit man, and God can call your spirit man at any time. He can call at any time before the slice hits. You're, are you hearing the Lord? Do you have any faith? 
Don't think, oh, his head, and he was beating. Oh! Is it got big enough? Oh, horrible! The Bible says to die is gain. That's what the Lord said. You enter eternity with him forever and ever. This body will return from to the dirt. It is your spirit, man, is who you are in your soul. Amen? So today you have a choice to be God's valentine. Today you have a choice to flatline. Everybody say flatline. Come on. So that the heart of the, 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 the beat, God's heartbeat can beat in you. But look at Jeremiah. He says this. Yet they did not, God speaking about the people, the children of God, when they did not obey God, we know Jeremiah was a prophet before the school. He was a prophet to the southern kingdom. And we know that he said this. They did not obey but they did not they, they did not obey obey nor incline their ear, but they walked in their own counsels. Look at and in the stubbornness of their what? Evil heart and went backwards and not forward. Genesis 5, 6, 5. The Lord saw, look at, I saw that the their heart, the thoughts, are we, the thoughts of their heart or evil continually. Now watch Jeremiah say evil heart and then Genesis says the Lord said they walked in the thoughts, the thoughts of their heart. They were evil continually. You have to look at that. You got to think about what God is saying. He says, he said, the Lord says your heart can bring thoughts in your mind. Your heart can be evil. Everybody say the heart's the seat of my emotions. Come on, the heart, my heart's See, whatever in your heart will be, it's going to come out of your emotions. That's why you need God's heart pumping inside of you. Amen? So we know that scripture establishes this, that your heart can have the enemy in there and your heart can bring thoughts to your mind. Okay? Now, if you have thoughts in your mind, your mind that are thoughts of judging, criticizing, thoughts of lust, thoughts of anger, thoughts of fear, if you have thoughts going on, you need to stop and say flat line for someone. Flat, flat line. Flat, don't let it be no more, right? Or it's important that we recognize I'm teaching you flat line today and let God's heart beat in you, but really you have to understand where are these thoughts coming from? If you don't identify, you will never conquer. And I teach you the word of God. I teach you the sword, the weapon, the sword, the word, the sword, the word. So I, I, if I'm having thoughts in my mind I have to ask the Father, is this coming from my heart? Is it, is it coming from something? Did I hear something? What was my trigger? Where did that thought come from? I, I would. I'm not just going to think it. Are you going to continue thinking it for how long? How long? Until you're running out the door? What? And it, until it becomes what? An emotion, action, character, habit, personality, attitude, and then you're all twisted at the end? Are you going to let it go that far? Amen? Or are you going to say, hold on, is this thought coming from my heart? Oh, Lord, clean my heart. Oh, Lord, I give you my heart. Oh, flat line. Killed it. Where's the hammer at? Let me go hammer. See, faith takes action. You have to have action behind what God says. So if God is saying today you need a flat line, and then today God introduced to you about nailing things, handwritings, and ordinances that are working contrary, contrary to you. This is an ordinance, it's like a command that's speaking inside of you. Once you identify, listen, you can conquer. The more word you know, the more Bible you know, the more power of God that lives inside of you. You are not an emotional yo-yo no more. Oh no, people can do things that you don't even, the way you get provoked before, oh you spill. Now, Things don't trouble you like they used to. They may hit you a bit, but you pick yourself up and you take charge. You get yourself up, I'm in the spirit now. I ain't going there. And that's how you begin to grow in the Holy Ghost. That's how you begin to experience the glory and the power of God. That's how you know I'm in the Garden of Eden, walking in authority and dominion. Watch, in the cool of the day, as scripture said, walking hand in hand with God. Isn't that powerful? That you are not alone. 
See, there's no lonely feelings and lonely and I need and I want and me, and all that. There's no, that doesn't exist. I'm sure you have your husband or your baby and you could have, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this, this broken need off of your broken soul. Where the enemy, where the enemy had control and he's losing control. Oh yes, yes, some of you already kicked him out. Thank, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Some of you are working to get the residue out of you. You know what residue is, right? Like, you know, the coffee grinds a black, black spot, you know, you've got the bleach in it so it can sit, so whiten it up again. Some of us have residue that God is still cleaning out. I just said, Lord, clean everything. I'm always telling Lord, clean everything out. Anything Satan planted in me, Father God, knowing and unknowing, Lord, just uproot everything from my subconscious mind. Any trigger me. Lord, anything that's distracting me, I take authority over in the name of Jesus. I ain't looking at that. I do what you do. I hope you're doing it. <laughs> I pray you are, listen, applying faith in what God is giving you. Amen. He's giving you himself right now. He's giving you the power to flatline. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we see here, thank you, Lord. Uh, we see here the Torah. Praise the Lord. So uh, Bishop Valentine had a heartbeat for God. Let's all say a heartbeat for God. Come on. We know that God is love, and he brought the love of God to the Roman soldiers and to the, the his spirit of people that he was assigned to. Scripture says in Mark chapter 9, 24, for whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whosoever will lose his life on account of Jesus, he will save it. My son, we look, give me your heart. Proverbs, Psalms 34, it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Jeremiah 15, 16, thy word, God, were found and I did eat them and thy word was unto me a joy and a rejoicing of my heart. Notice how the Lord is using eating. We all love to eat and we probably have like a special plate or one of our favorite dishes that brings us so much pleasure when we're chewing it. The aroma just mm, 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 delicious, right? And we experience a satisfaction then you go lay down, you know, whatever it is. Some people can't sleep after they eye knock up real quick. Everybody's different. Some people have to sit sitting down because you eat too much. <laughs> but anyways, so look at how God uses that that type of that type we use that type of, of lingo to us, that language because we understand to taste and see. And God says right here, your words, Jeremiah said, your words were found and I ate them. He said they were unto be joy and rejoicing of my what? Heart. The heart being the seed of your what? emotions. The more words you eat, the more you understand, the more peace, the more joy, and the flavor of God gets better and better. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So beautiful. So we see here that we have to recognize that we have a spiritual diseased heart. And I want you to know that God is the great physician to bring the medication of his word to your heart. Many people have experienced a lot of devastation, a lot of loss, a broken heart, a wounded heart, a weak heart, an idle heart, a rebellious heart, a prideful heart. It's in your Bible over 700 times the word heart. And there's a lot of scriptures that talk about how the condition of the heart is. And God wants your heart healed. He wants you to flatline and everything that you went through. Because in order for God's heart to live and beat inside of you, you got to flatline. Your heartbeat needs to stop. Whatever your heart is beating for, whatever the heart is talking, because remember scripture, Genesis 6 says the thoughts of your what? Heart or evil what? Continually, right? So God, we know that that heart, that heart that's beating thoughts, imaginations, emotions, thoughts, imaginations, emotions, you know, images, and we have to understand this is, this is where the power of God lies. Lord, flatline me. Everything must die. Everything must be nailed to the cross. You see, it's a daily death to self. Paul the Apostle said, I die daily. I'm, I said, man, he must have had some issues. He had to die daily. Well, I realized I die daily too. We all have a decision and a choice to follow what God says. He says, die daily. To whatever you think, whatever, whatever's, whatever's breathing inside of you that's causing your heart to be what? Troubled. Amen. Now look at the scripture, it says, it says, but the Lord told Samuel, don't look at his appearance on how tall he is because I have rejected him. God, God does not see as human sees. 
It says right here, humans look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks into the what? Heart. Yes, he's watching your heart. So you better hurry up and get everybody out of there. You're going to get in trouble. Get everybody out of your heart. Amen. <laughs> Amen. First Samuel, Samuel 13, it says, But now your kingdom shall come, shall, con shall your kingdom shall not continue. Talking about Samuel. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Notice how it says, The Lord has sought for somebody that will have God's heart. And listen, to have God's heart beating inside of you, because our heart, listen, it moves the blood. If you have God's heart beating in you, his blood is going to flow through every part of your being. The blood through your eyes, what you see through your ears, you have blood that you cut, you bleed everywhere, right? The blood is constantly flowing. Prophetic picture here. So God said, I look at the heart and God said, I'm looking for somebody after my own heart. So we know that God can do this. Amen. So James chapter 4 verse 8, it says, draw near Draw nigh unto me, and he will, the Lord says, and I'll draw, draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and what? Purify your hearts. So purify your hearts. So we, it's up to us to take action on this message. Are you hearing the Lord? Everybody say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, God, Father God, today I flat life. And let your heart beat in me. Can you imagine if you say that every morning? Flat life. Somebody says somebody that, irritates, somebody that irritates you, flatline. Get this, get it. Flatline. You don't have to say flatline. <laughs> Show all your body like flatline. <laughs> no, quietly say it to yourself. Just between you and God. <laughs> How many know body talks? Yeah. Everybody say body language. Body language. We could have body language. So be careful when you start swinging those hips. Be careful. Always make the people aware of Because if you don't say here, something else moves. So be careful because everybody's watching you, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we see here a spiritual heart disease can be a broken heart, a fearful heart, an angry heart. The heart is the seat of your what? Emotions. So if I'm angry and I'm getting so angry at something, somebody... If I got to stop myself and say, I'm flatlining to this right now, right? That's the power of God right there. Lord, I don't want this to beat in my heart. So I flatline. I mean, kill it. I flatline. And let your heart beat in me. Boom. Boom. And let, take a deep breath. Let the blood start flowing. <laughs> let the blood of mercy look at that person. Oh, give them what they don't deserve. <sighs> right? Let the heart of God beat in you. You understand? Yes, today we are honoring Bishop Valentine for his martyrism. Listen, for what he did for God, he let the heart of God beat in him to bring Jesus, bring order, love, and the commandments of God to the people he was assigned to. Will you do the same? Amen? Give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.